everyone, and welcome back to the Chill Survival Series. Today we're going to build a blacksmith so we can trade iron with villagers and upgrade our gear. We have a big project ahead of us today, so let's get started. So after we had built out the iron farm the other day, I noticed my armor bar was missing a couple notches. It looks like my boots are done and my pants and chest plate are not far behind. So I think we kind of got to solve that issue today. Now I've actually been rocking this armor for quite some time, so I would say it's held up pretty well, especially considering I never really enchanted any of it. All things considered, I think they've been pretty durable, but I can't run around here without proper boots. I stubbed my toe on a flower the other day and it hurt and no, it's it's not because I'm a baby. I'm not a baby. But most importantly, I just can't help but to feel that it doesn't look cool when you're missing a piece of armor. I know I wear invisible armor most of the time, but this fit is just way off. Look at my little boots down there. Come on. So I say in the name of fashion, we make ourselves a nice new set of armor today. Now, I actually have quite a few diamonds. That's not really the issue. I think the issue is more so that I never really bothered enchanting any of it. Now, we all know that enchantments cost experience and also emeralds because we're required to buy those books from villagers. And these guys have set their prices pretty high for some of these books. How is it that inflation has even taken over this Minecraft world? Huh. Anyway, I kind of figured that since this stick trader isn't really giving us a whole lot of emeralds, I mean, he still doesn't even want to trade with me. I don't know what that's about. Dude's holding a grudge or something. Or you know what? Wait a second. Maybe it's because he can't access his bed. There you go, buddy. Go to sleep so I can trade with you. Oh, was it the job block he wanted? Oh, wait, nope, nothing. You still don't want to trade with me? Whatever, man. Either way, I think we need another way to trade some emeralds to make this a little bit easier for us. And I kind of figured that since we now have a really good supply of iron, we could start trading that with some villagers. I mean, with a supply like this, what else am I going to use it for other than like an abundance of lanterns? But I mean, when I see iron, my eyes are gleaming because I also see emeralds. So I figured today we could build a blacksmith to help us with this problem. Now, in the last episode, I kind of mentioned that I wanted this area to be a little bit more industrial. And I feel like a blacksmith would suit this area perfectly. The only problem is we have a lot of stuff to patch up here. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get some dirt for this. All right, let's start filling some of this in. Wait. Why are the clouds like that? Hold on a second, let me put my glasses on. Oh, that's better. All right, so I gave myself a little bit more space to work with, and I think this is pretty good. From an overhead view, you can see it's a lot more even around here. There's still quite a bit of messiness surrounding this flat patch. However, we'll worry about that on another day when we're doing another project. Now, the biggest space we have at the moment is right to the side of this iron farm right here. So I think this would be a good spot to build the blacksmith. Now, we're not going to want it directly in line with the iron farm, just because we risk things looking a little too same same when everything's lined up along this path. I was kind of thinking about maybe pushing it back a little bit to around here. And I think that should probably give us a good amount of space. So I think we're pretty much all set. Why is there a bat flying around behind me? Buddy, what are you doing? All right, with a spot in mind, let's figure out how we're gonna build this thing. So a good reference point for a build like this would actually be other builds in the same area. I figure since we're going for more of an industrial theme, maybe we can pull some aspects out of this iron farm and bring them into the forge that we're building. So with this palette in mind, let's go see what other types of blocks we have. All right, first of all, spruce is a pretty consistent block throughout our base, so that's a no brainer. Now for the iron farm, we actually did end up using diorite and granite. And I think if we utilize these blocks a little differently, we can incorporate them into this forge. And finally, I'm kind of thinking to add that little bit of difference that we need, that we pull in some stone and cobble stone. All right, how's a palette like this look? Yeah, I think that looks good. We do have three of the same blocks that we used in the iron farm, but I think you can kind of see that without that bluish green copper, this is going to be a completely different vibe of a build. I feel like you can't really go wrong with a palette like this because it's just very warm and classic looking. Plus, it's got that industrial vibe that we need with all of the stones we're incorporating. And then, of course, we've got that spruce for that cottagecore flare. So let's just gather up some of the supplies we're gonna need to get this build going. 
Let's pop down our little work area and get some of these materials put away. Now, I think you can kind of see that we're starting to run low on spruce, which surprise, surprise, we're always using it. And we have quite a bit of cobble. However, we only have a little bit of stone bricks. Now, since I don't have a silk touch pickaxe yet, I'm unfortunately going to have to smelt some of that cobble into stone. Ooh, I've got some lava buckets for the furnaces. You know what? Maybe that's something that we add to this blacksmith today. We go through too much coal to sustain ourselves at this point, so I feel like having a lava farm would be very beneficial. Add that to the list of things we need today. All right, let's pop all this cobble in and get it burning. I was kind of picturing those stone bricks as a base. So while we're waiting for that to cook, let's start chopping down some spruce trees. Four trees later, and we've got ourselves tons of spruce. Now let's replant these saplings and let's get out of here. Before we head back to the base, I'm gonna quickly hop down into the caves to gather up a little bit more andesite and diorite. Oh, what's that? Iron? Too bad I don't need it anymore because I have an iron farm. Doesn't really matter, I'm still gonna take it. All right, I think that should be enough for both. Let's head on up. While we were away, our stone's been burning, so we have some stuff to collect. So I don't think I'm gonna be using any regular stone for this build. Andesite will kind of be the replacement for that because it just has a little bit more texture. So all of this we can turn into the stone bricks. With a good amount of materials collected, I think we're ready to begin building this thing. First of all, let's get this tree out of here. All right, that's better. Now let's start things off by laying out a foundation. I don't want it to be directly in line with this build. So I would say probably somewhere around here would be a good starting point. All right, I think I'm gonna start this off by laying out the main footprint of this build. I'm kind of picturing this part to be an enclosed indoor space the villagers can live in. I think this should be enough space, especially if we do two floors. And of course, since this is a blacksmith, we need a forge. I think I'm gonna add a spot to the side so we can fit that in. I'd like to have an open area for that, and of course we can't have that with villagers, so I think adding an extension on the side would be perfect for that. Okay, the shape's down, and I feel like this is a pretty good spot for this build. Let's just free cam really quickly so we can take a better look. I think that's a good amount of separation between the iron farm and this build. We want to leave room so we can add in some different decorations, and maybe even some smaller builds around it, so I think this is good. Alright, let's get these walls put up. And don't forget to torch the insides of your builds. Unless you want mobs spawning inside of it. I don't know. Not my business. I mean, it's basically just two stone rectangles right now. But hey, it's a start and the footprint seems to be good for this area. So similar to the iron farm, I want this build to have a little bit more height for this area. I would ideally like these industrial builds to be a little bit bigger than most of the stuff that we have around the base with maybe a couple small builds sprinkled throughout. Now to keep in theme with the iron farm, I'm gonna add in some spruce beams. Okay, I just discovered the coolest trick to avoid fall damage. Ready? Ready? Watch this. <gasps> Swag. Okay, beams in place. Perfect, amazing. Now we've gotta figure out what we're gonna do with these walls. So we've got our diorite and we've got our granite and we have an important decision to make. Let's just put up like a little sample strip right here. Now for this build, we really could go either way. It's down to personal preference. However, I'm kind of digging the look of the diorite with the stone brick. Now that is what we also have on the top floor for our iron farm. So that would be a really big similarity for these two builds, which isn't really a bad thing. Having a bunch of builds in one area match some sort of theme can actually make it feel very consistent and cohesive. However, to mix it up and set these two apart just a little bit, I kind of had the idea to incorporate some calcite into this build. That would provide just a little bit of difference in texture to help set these two builds apart and make them unique from one another. And you know what they say, variety is the spice of life and I don't have calcite. But I know where I can get some. Don't, don't even worry about it. Down we go. Remember when I was stuck in this part of the cave hiding from mobs? 
like two episodes into the series and I was too afraid to deal with them because I really didn't have that good of gear. Ah, oh, memories. Anyway, that's where the Kel site is. Ow! Let's go ahead and grab up as much as we can. I seem to have taken most of what I could from this geode. Safe to say, I don't think I'm really gonna be coming back here for some calcite anytime soon, but I think we have more than enough for this build. And it seems as though I am very hungry right now and I have lost some hearts. I can't imagine why. It's not like I took fall damage or anything while not wearing boots. All right, so we've got our calcite and I think we should also get ourselves some polished diorite to mix in with this. And now I think we're ready to rock. Whoa! Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I, I was lucky. I think adding that bit of calcite is definitely gonna help differentiate between these two builds. Although I think we could probably do with adding a little bit more calcite than diorite, I might replace some of these blocks a little bit, especially on the wall over here. Like that kind of looks like a bathroom floor right in that spot. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. The walls are pretty much in place, which means the only thing that we have left is to put up the roof. And the last block in this palette, of course, is the granite. Now, before we get started on the roof, I kind of had a little bit of a thought. We added a bunch of calcite to differentiate from the diorite. Now, what if we use brick to complement the granite? Those blocks go so well together, and of course, it would help us differentiate from the iron farm a little bit more. All right, the question is, do I have any? Okay, well, I've got two. That's a start. Oh, wait, I've got 35. Okay, that's not nearly enough still, but it's better than nothing. We do have some clay I could use, though. Let's quickly shovel all of this so we can get some bricks going. Let's toss these in to burn. And while we're waiting for those, I'll go collect a little bit more. A couple more stacks of clay should be good. Now we just gotta let all of this stuff burn into bricks and we're good to go. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is start with a trim which is gonna be made of spruce. So I decided to go with something that was a little bit more steep. The roof that we have on the iron farm is very rounded and shallow, so I figured this would be a nice contrast. So for the side part of this build, I kind of want the roof to slope into the main part of the build. And I think going with mostly slabs will help us achieve that gentle slope upwards. The shape's all done and I'm really happy with it. It's got a little bit of a medieval style flair to it and I think that's because of the roof styles that I chose. However, I think incorporating something like brick as well as some other decorations is really going to make it look more cottagecore in the end. With the roof laid out, I think this is looking so nice. So now all we really have to do is add in some details to make this build come to life. So I added in some decorations and I think this thing is looking really cute. Now let me just free cam really quickly. I did originally have the roof one block higher, but it just felt a little bit too tall at the top. So I skimmed off one layer and I think that's looking a lot better. I also tried to keep the decorating relatively simple. I added in some leaves here and there, but I didn't go too overboard and also just a couple of roses and lanterns and all that stuff. And I think with some of those decorations in place, it kind of helps give that cottage core vibe to the build. Now as for for the interior, I haven't actually done anything yet. I pretty much just laid the groundwork for where we could potentially put things. So the floor is all in. We've got gates ready to go so the villagers can't leave. And this is the outdoor forge area that only I would be able to access. But I figured since villagers are probably the most difficult thing to deal with, we should probably just get that over and done with. So for this build, I think I'm gonna put the villagers into little quadrants so it's easier to trade with them. I honestly really do love having the villagers be able to walk around a build. However, sometimes it just makes things a little bit too difficult. And since this is gonna be a really important trade for us, I'd rather it just be easy. Oh, and of course the forecast is rain. Even the weather's like, oh, 
you're dealing with villagers today? Let me just make it even more miserable. So thankfully, since I kind of anticipated having to move villagers around from this area over back here, I did leave some of the track work. So all we really need to do is add a little bit more and then we're good to go. I swear the tracks weren't still there because I was just being lazy. All right, the track's laid out and it's feeding them directly where they need to go. So now I'm just gonna divide this section up a little bit more to make quadrants for them. Don't really have enough space to fit one in here. However, we could kind of just make this a little bit more decorative. Then I'm just gonna build another beam here and then another beam here. It's a little bit off center, but honestly, I don't really mind that. We can do some cool decorations in between. And would you look at that? The weather's cleared up and I think it is the perfect day to move these villagers over. I'm really hoping they all cooperate today. Hello there. Does anybody want to trade iron with me for the rest of your life? There we go. Get in the cart. Perfect. Get on the track and you are good to go, buddy. Bye. See you soon. <gasps> Ooh, that landscape is looking really nice. Oh, I forgot about the villager. Let's go. So villager number one is safely in his quadrant. And I think that should be good. We're just gonna have to break this. And they're all set to go in there. I think the next task is to focus on getting all of the villagers in here. And then we'll worry about their job blocks afterwards. All right, homie. Are you gonna cooperate? Come on. Nope. Don't make this difficult. Come on. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Villager number two is off. There we go. Okay, perfect. He is in the spot he should be. So far, so good. And now all we need to do is bring one more villager in and we're good to go. Look at us go. All right, one more. Let's make this easy. Oh, and it was. Dare I say I have a decent system in place? Like, I know there's always room to make things more efficient, but this is working pretty well. All right, I've got three in place down here and I'm considering putting a couple more up here. Now I'd have to temporarily get rid of this staircase but that's okay. I think I'm gonna try to get one more. Now I do kind of worry that putting so many villagers next to our iron farm could potentially cause it to malfunction. I think villagers need to be able to pathfind to a bed in order for the golems to spawn. However, I think it's best to err on the side of caution here and maybe just bring in one more villager. Plus I think that should be good trading wise. All right, off you go. Now, I think in order to be able to trade iron for emeralds, all you need are grindstones and smithing tables. So smithing tables are pretty easy to make. There we go. Let's make a bunch there. And for grindstones, we just need some planks, sticks, and stone slabs. Now let's grab some iron so we could potentially trade with it. And I think it might be one of the first trades that pops up with the villagers, but I'm not quite sure. We might have to trade a couple things before they actually trade the iron. Yeah, I think we're gonna need some emeralds first. They want the sweet, sweet emeralds. Okay, fine. That's fine, I can do that for you. So yeah, I think we've gotta level up the villagers first in order to obtain that trade. Now there is a chance that these villagers might not give us this trade. And in that case, uh, we might have to pour some lava accidentally. Hey, those are the risks associated with working in a forge. I can't help it. All right, let's hope I have some emeralds somewhere. Okay, we've got 11. And I'm really hoping this amount gets us to the iron trade that we need. All right, let's trade with you. Wow, thank you. Stone axes, this is amazing. Oops, I dropped these. Don't worry, I'm gonna bring these back later because I'm definitely gonna use them. They're so pretty. Thank you so much. Please level up to something good, I beg. Oh, um, let me just go outside really quickly and just, you know, just, I'm just looking at something out here. I'm, I'm not throwing the axes away though, trust me. Definitely not throwing them away. Oh, we can trade iron with this one. Amazing, okay. So this one's locked in, we're good to go. He trades iron with us. All right, this guy wants to trade again, which is perfect because I need some more emeralds in order to trade with these dudes. I mean, you're not, you haven't taken a job on yet, so I'm not even gonna bother. And as for you, wow, thank you. These stone pickaxes are really nice. Oh, did I drop? Oh no, I dropped the emeralds. Give them back, give them back. Oh no, no, no see them oh no okay i can trade with you i can get more okay i should probably clear my inventory too <laughs> make some space for this otherwise i'm just gonna keep dropping all the emeralds and I'm just gonna be sad about it don't tell the villagers don't tell them they'll be so upset 
please, please. Yes, okay, we got another iron trade. Perfect, easy peasy. Now this guy doesn't really seem to be latching to the grindstone, so I might just replace it with a smithing table. Honestly, it doesn't really make a difference. Whatever's easiest. Again, thank you so much for these lovely shovels. You know, I'm gonna tell all of my friends and family about the durability and quality of these shovels. They sure are really nice. I'm gonna pass them along to my friends to try out too. That's why I'm buying so many from you. Please get me out here and I beg. Yes! Okay, perfect. Sometimes they don't give the iron trade, so it, it can be a toss up, but so far we've been really lucky. All right, we have one final villager to trade with upstairs and then we're all set to go. You gonna level up? Yes! Okay, we got it. We got four iron trades good to go. And honestly, I think that's enough. So that means I can repair all of this stuff and pretty much just start decorating. So pretty much what we can do now is simply pop into our iron farm, grab this abundance of iron and trade to our heart's content. Okay, you don't wanna trade with me, that's fine. You still do, so that's good. And you buddy, oh, you don't wanna trade with me yet either. That's okay. So I think this is a good amount of trades for us. You can already see how many emeralds we've gotten from this. And that was with having to trade some of the emeralds away. But this is substantially easier than doing the stick trade. And also we have so much iron that we're never gonna use for anything else except like lanterns. So I think this is the perfect setup. Now, all I really have to do is decorate this area, make it look a little bit more like a forge because right now it's just kind of a sad looking room over there. Stop looking at me with one eye. So I'm gonna finish decorating this place and then finally. Finally, we will be able to upgrade our armor back to diamond. Alrighty, here is the forge all complete. And I think it is looking awesome. So before we work on upgrading our armor, let's do a quick little walkthrough of this build. Now I did lay a little bit of a path Eventually, I think I would like it to be a complete path all the way around with minimal grass. However, I wasn't too sure of how it would look with just two builds so far, so I just did a classic little path. Basically, I just kept in theme with the blocks that we used for this and built up just a temporary little path with some coarse dirt around the edges. It's also connected to the dirt path over here so we can easily access it through our farmland. Now, as for the interior of the build, I built out this cute little decorative forge area. I mean, we could always use this anvil, grindstone and stone cutter, but this is pretty much a cute little decorational area. I wanted something that was a little bit more open concept. Now I would eventually like to change this campfire into something else, possibly a magma block or something. The campfire is all I had at the moment, but I think it still does a really good job. I would also love to sprinkle in some blocks of iron and coal into the ground to make it look a little bit more messy. However, I don't have silk touch yet, so I kind of made do with coarse dirt. So as for the interior over here, We've got all of our villagers in place. We've got some storage. I was also trading with them while I was working on this. So we've got quite a few emeralds. And I basically just did the same thing. Uh, decorated it with items that I thought would look cute in a forge. I left some of the torches to keep it looking a little bit rustic. Also added in some hanging chains and stuff. And I think all of this kept pretty well with the theme. And same for the upstairs as well. I think this is actually my favorite room. I added in a bunch of cobwebs to make it look a little bit more run down in here. Added in a cute little villager bell here because I think this is a really nice detail. Have another anvil and I added in some copper blocks to make it look a little bit more industrial. Oh, and I think this is actually my first time using hanging signs as a banister and honestly, I really like it. It looks so cool. Then in this corner, I added in some various stones that I would imagine a blacksmith would work with and I think it turned out really nice. So the space is all functional, set up and ready to go. And with that, I think we can probably begin upgrading our armor. At long last, I can finally get diamond pants and boots again. Also, if you're wondering why I suddenly have iron pants on, it's because I streamed the other day and in the process, yeah, my, uh, my diamond pants did in fact break. It was highly embarrassing. I don't wanna talk about it. All right, it's a moment of truth. Let's finally take these diamonds and let's make ourselves some new pants, new shoes. And I think we do need a new chest plate as well. However, I don't know how much we're gonna be able to enchant because I only have 42 levels, but hey, this is a start. Let's head on over to our enchanting area. It's been a minute since we've been here, honestly. And I think I'm gonna start with the boots. 
So we've got Unbreaking 3, Fire Protection, and Depth Strider. You know, I would love Feather Falling, but this is actually pretty good. All we really need to do now is put Mending on it. So that's not going to cost too much in terms of Emeralds. As for the Diamond Leggings, we have 39 levels, so we should be good. Ooh, protection four. That's pretty good. I mean, that's what we're missing on these boots right here. We're eventually going to have to get that as well as feather falling. So I think I might keep these and just add unbreaking and mending to them. Now the chest plate. Oof, not thorns. I would not like that. Maybe I'll just level one this and disenchant them. Thorns are not the vibe for my chest plate. Blast protection, unbreaking three, and thorns. Again. I have a couple more levels. I think I should risk it. Fire protection and I'm breaking three. All right, we don't have regular protection on it yet, but protection three, you know what? I could live with that for now. Now, I don't know if because I have fire protection on it, then I can't put protection four on it. I'm gonna have to look it up. So I think in terms of the chest plate, I'm not gonna put mending on it for now, just in case. All right, so we need one unbreaking book. Where are you going, sir? You could fall down that pit, you realize. You know what I need to do? I need to just block off the pit he could fall down. There we go. All right, let's get Unbreaking 3 from you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And let's head on over to our villager here and grab a bunch of mending books. Perfect. All stash these emeralds over here for now. And with that, I think we're pretty much good for all the books that we need. So now it is time. The moment of truth. Let's use one of these anvils in our new build, because why not? All right, let's finally get mending on some new boots. I'm gonna call these drifty sneakers. There's one done. Then we're gonna combine a mending and a breaking book and attach that to our pants with a Z. And finally, the diamond chest plate. I think we're gonna leave it has unbreaking on it, so it has some durability, that's fine. I don't know if I wanna keep it. I wanna look into the whole fire protection thing if that means I can't put protection four on it. So those will just be there for now, just hanging out. And with that, we have all of the gear that we need. So let's finally do this. Cue the dramatic music. You couldn't see any of that. I'm wearing my invisible armor. Look at that. We've got ourselves some full diamond armor again, and it is looking mighty fresh, mighty shining. So I would say that's a job well done. Now, there are, of course, a couple of enchantments that we're going to have to upgrade on some of these pieces, but that's totally OK. We still have so many librarians that we need to grab, so that's a work in progress. But I also noticed I have Depth Strider on these boots, and I think that means I can swim faster. Oh yeah, look at that. I've got some speed here. Look at me go. All right, everybody. I think with that, that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. We got a lot accomplished today, and this is going to make trading so, so much easier going forward. So with all of that, I guess I'll see you all in the next one.